Hey everyone, wow it's been a minute since I've done one of these videos, but I wanted to share my experience with the AWS certification exams using Pearson View's OnView online proctoring service. Because there's a lot of videos online talking about how to prepare for AWS certification exams, but in this video we are specifically talking about how to prepare to do the exam from home with online proctoring. Now over the six months, I've completed five AWS certifications from home. AI Practitioner, Machine Learning Engineer Associate, Machine Learning Specialty, that one was a recertification, Solutions Architect Professional, and DevOps Engineer Professional. So every exam level from foundational through to professional. Now while online proctoring isn't my first choice, it does offer significant convenience, especially for me living in Canberra, which doesn't have any local testing centers. The closest is Sydney, which is over three hours away. It's also often easier to get the exam date and time you want using OnView online proctoring rather than a testing center. So let's get down to business. To start, I'm gonna walk you through my setup for these exams. So here's my workspace for the exams, which I set up specially for online exams. My laptop is in clamshell mode, connected to an external monitor with an external webcam and external keyboard and mouse. Now you can only have a single monitor active during the exam, which is why the laptop must be shut in so-called clamshell mode, which turns off the laptop's internal display. The computer is connected to wired ethernet, which is highly recommended to provide a more stable connection than wireless. And very importantly, your desk must be completely clean. And I strongly suggest facing a blank wall. You don't need an entirely empty room. I mean, here there's quite a bit of other stuff in the room, like my 3D printer, but it's either off to the sides or behind me. The main thing is you don't want anything in front of the desk, which you could potentially look at during the exam. Now, speaking of which, during the exam, you always need to look at the screen. Don't look away or off to the sides, otherwise your exam might be invalidated. The proctor will be monitoring you throughout the entire exam via the webcam. And finally, the environment must also be quiet. So if there are other people in the house, particularly children or maybe pets, it might be best to arrange somewhere else for them to be while you sit the exam. Let's drill down into a few components of the setup. For the computer, I strongly recommend using a personal computer, never a work machine. This is because the exam requires a lockdown browser that checks for background processes, which could conflict with corporate security software. Also, if you're using a laptop, ensure that it's fully charged and connected to power. The last thing that you want is for the laptop to die in the middle of the exam. Now, are you ready for a pro tip? Here's a game changer that I discovered. Use an external monitor with an external webcam, keyboard, and mouse. I personally use a Dell 27 inch monitor with Logitech webcam, and this setup really transformed my exam experience, especially for professional and specialty certifications where the exam questions can be lengthy. Because with this larger screen, you can usually see entire questions and all answer options without any scroll. And I think that's a huge advantage seeing everything at once on the one screen. It also helps with your posture and comfort because you don't need to crouch over a laptop, but can instead look more naturally at a correctly positioned display. As I mentioned before, remember you can only have a single screen for the exam. So your laptop lid must be shut and the laptop running in clamshell mode. Another pro tip, when you've booked your exam, Pearson View will send you an email with instructions about how to test your computer with a simulated exam. This is very important to do, as it uses the same lockdown browser as the real exam and runs the same tests. So this will highlight any potential problems so you can deal with them well ahead of exam day. Okay, let's assume that you've set up your exam workspace, booked in for the exam, tested your computer, and now it's the big day. Let's move on to the process for checking into your exam. You can check in 30 minutes before your scheduled exam start time. For example, I usually schedule my exams for 9 a.m., so I check in at 8.30 a.m. sharp. Just a heads up that you see here in the video that I need to manually refresh the exam launch page to get the check-in button. It won't auto-refresh. 
The check-in process takes around 10 to 15 minutes and does involve several steps, so don't wait. And a pro tip about the check-in, you'll need your phone initially. The system generates a QR code that you scan using your phone, which brings up a website on your phone to take photos of your ID. In my case, I used my driver's license and also the workspace where you are sitting the exam. After the phone portion, you'll be connected to a proctor who will greet you and then do some additional verifications. Make sure your webcam is connected to your computer using a long USB cable. I recommend around two meters because the proctor will ask you to show your workspace again and it's much easier to do with an external webcam rather than an integrated webcam in a laptop. And it's even easier if you have a long USB cable connecting the webcam. The exam starts immediately after check-in is concluded. So usually if I have a 9 a.m. check-in, I typically actually start at around 8.45 a.m. Earlier start, earlier finish. Now let me share what I consider one of the most crucial aspects of online exam success, preparing yourself physically for the exam. This is important because when sitting your exam via online proctoring, you cannot leave the webcam view during the exam for any reason. Not to use the bathroom, not to give your eyes a break. If you do, your exam may be invalidated and you may be failed. Remember, some of these exams can run for up to three hours for professional and specialty certifications, which can make bathroom breaks, let's just say, challenging if you don't prepare yourself appropriately and pretty uncomfortable. So here's my strategy and it begins the night before the exam where I have a big dinner and focus on getting fully hydrated. I drink plenty of water throughout the evening knowing I'll need to maybe make one or two bathroom trips overnight. And it does mean a little interrupted sleep, but it's definitely worth it. I make sure that I schedule my exam first thing in the morning. I schedule my exams usually between 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m., depending on when I can get a slot, but never later than 9 a.m. I'll wake up at least one and a half hours before the exam and just have a small cup of water or juice with a banana and some toast, enough to maintain hydration and give me some energy, but my body has plenty of time to process it before the exam begins. This strategy has worked perfectly across all five of my certifications, including the three hour professional and specialty exams. And I've never felt the urgent urge to use a bathroom during the exam. Now, if you want to give your eyes a rest during the exam, I look directly at the webcam. Your eyes shouldn't wander during the exam. So keep them either on the screen or looking down the barrel of that camera. And remember, being comfortable during the exam is crucial for maintaining focus. The last thing you want is to be distracted by physical discomfort when you're trying to concentrate on complex technical questions. Now, one last thing. Here's a crucial timing tip for your final bathroom break. During check-in, there's a natural opportunity to pause after you complete the phone-based check-in, but before you proceed further in the process to meet your proctor. In this video, I've just completed the phone-based check-in and click refresh. Notice how it now proceeds to the testing rules agreement screen. When I reach this screen, I stop and take my final bathroom break. As the rules say, once you proceed past this screen, you'll need to stay in webcam view for the entire exam duration. Using these approaches, I've successfully completed the Solutions Architect Professional, DevOps Engineer Professional, Machine Learning Specialty, Machine Learning Engineer Associate, and AI Practitioner Certification exams at home using remote proctoring. So let's recap some of the crucial points to remember. Ensure your environment is completely quiet and clear of materials. Use an external monitor, webcam, keyboard, and mouse if possible. You can't leave your seat or webcam view during the exam. The webcam monitors you throughout the entire exam session. Keep your eyes on the screen. Looking away or talking to yourself will trigger proctor warnings. And physically prepare for the exam to minimize potential discomfort. Finally, before exam day, make sure you test the computer you'll be using for the exam. There are instructions in the email you'll receive from Pearson View about how to do this. So while online proctoring has its challenges, with proper preparation, it can be a convenient and effective way to advance your AWS certification journey. The key is in preparation, both of your environment and of yourself. 
If you're considering AWS certifications, I hope these insights help you prepare for your online exam experience. Drop a comment if you have any questions about Pacific certifications or the online proctoring process, and good luck with your certification journey.